this is Ina in with you in the fight back. In this inaugural video, the biggest question facing me was where to begin. What book should I review to start this whole thing off? Well, as a communist, I think the most important person to start with is Karl Marx. This is Biography of Karl Marx by Franz Merring. I'm hoping you can see the name there. I realize the quality on this video is not the greatest. Sorry. Anyway, this is probably one of the first biographies of Karl Marx and for a long time the definitive one. Franz Mehring was a German social democrat, a Marxist, a communist. He lived from 1846 through 1919. He was active in the German Social Democratic Party after having been a German liberal, and he was a member of the Spartacus League, which opposed German involvement in World War I, and he was later a founding member of the German Communist Party. Franz Mehring thus has radical credentials, to say the least, and he, was, he wrote before the whole disaster of Stalinism, before communism had really become a worldwide force later on in the 20th century. Now, Franz Mehring's biography of Karl Marx, who I would argue is probably one of the most important thinkers in history, Marx was politically active in the first international working men's association, the Communist League in Germany. He wrote Das Kapital, volumes 1, 2, and 3, the latter two edited by Engels, along with numerous other works, probably most famously the Communist Manifesto. And any study of communism would necessarily have to include him. But what about Marx's life? Well, Marx began his life as a a philosopher in Germany in the Young Hegelian movement, later moving toward a communist position through his critique of various other thinkers. He's active in the 1848 revolution. Afterwards, he had to live in England in exile until his death in 1883. During that time, he wrote Das Kapital, and again, he was involved in the First International, which uh, notably defended the Paris Commune, after its massacre by uh, the forces of order in France. Now, Mehring's biography does an adequate job of tracing Marx's um, life from his beginnings in elementary school down through his death. It's well written, well argued. There are adequate summaries, I would say, of Marx's major works, Das Kapital, the Civil War in France, the Communist Manifesto, and there are all sorts of criticisms that I could make about various commentaries on Marx's work. For instance, simplification. It's always better to read any great thinker in his own words if possible. And I'm going to let Mehring slide on that because the truth is there are dozens, hundreds of commentaries on Marx's work, and Mehring does an adequate job of pretty much giving you the basics on the labor theory of value, materialist conception of history, dialectics, etc., etc. And the truth is, I'm very pleased with Mehring's work also in that it really gives a good sense of Marx, not just as a political thinker, but it also shows his activism in the Communist League in Germany, in the First International, there, now, there are certain criticisms of that I will make in a moment, but it, I, I enjoyed that side of it. It also shows, you know, Marx's faults, you know, his sometimes frosty relations with other socialist thinkers, even with Engels, and it really shows the human side of the man as well. And, but the criticisms of Mehring's work are, I would argue, twofold. Number one, Mehring was, he, although he was a Marxist, he took an, he was very critical of certain areas of Marxist activity. For instance, Mehring takes the side of Ferdinand Lassiel, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and Mikhail Buchanan. Uh, the first was a German social democrat, rather authoritarian, and in pretty much, I would say, collusion with Otto von Bismarck, a reactionary. And at the same time, LaSalle was claiming to be a socialist. 
and Marx was critical of him for this, but for instance, do you really think it's a good idea for the workers to be collaborating with the bosses, the, the serfs with the landlords? Come on, that's, that's not right. But Maring, he's pretty much taken LaSalle's side. He's pointing out, he's thinking it's more Marx's jealousy. And it's really, the truth is, if anything, Marx should have broken with this guy earlier than when he did. For Mikhail Buchanan, and I'm probably going to get slack from this from anarchists, Buchanan was an anarchist, probably one of the more important anarchists from Russia. He was also active in the First International. And there's a quarrel between him and Marx where Buchanan got expelled from the First International. And Buchanan uh, claimed Marx is a, was authoritarian. He pretty much kicked him out. And Marx was saying this guy was violating the statutes of the international and that he was setting up a secret organization within. And the truth is, that's probably what happened. I would urge you, for starters, if you don't trust Maring's position on this, I would look at Hal Draper's work. Volume 4 of Karl Marx's Theory of Revolution, and Richard Hunt, The Political Ideas of Marx and Engels, Volume 2, for his discussion of Mikhail Buchanan. Now, Maring takes the side of Buchanan in this, pretty much saying Marx wasn't treating the guy, it was like jealousy and that. It's really wasn't. Marx isn't right, I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm not. But anyway, uh, the other criticism I have of this work is nothing, no fault of Maring's, but the fact that some important works of Marx were not published until after this work was uh, released. This work was released in 1918, and certain works of Marx, for instance, the Economic and Philosophical Manuscripts of 1844 and the Grand Gis, which... Uh, with the outlines to Das Kapital was released in German in 1939. And Maring's work, again, was released in 1918. So he didn't have access to these important works. And the reason this is important is many of the works of the early Marx show how he developed into a communist. His theories of alienation, early critiques of political economy, socialism, communism, the various currents, how he was dealing with that. And Maring kind of, he, he can't give a complete picture of Marx's intellectual development. And another reason we need, and in the Grundrisse, the outlines, we see Marx in his workshop working out the ideas of Das Kapital, seeing how the ideas from his earlier youth, for instance, alienation, concepts of dialectics, were carrying over, maybe more developed, but they were being, there. it's very plausible to make a case that there was no break in Marx's intellectual development from early to later. And Maring just didn't have access to these documents to present a full picture of Marx's intellectual de development. And that's no fault of the man. And in spite of my criticism of this book, it's well written, it's well argued, and you know, it'll keep you entertained. So if you're looking for an introduction to Marx that maybe is not a hagiography, something that presents the man as the same. This is probably the the book that I would use. So anyway, this is Ina in with you in the fight back. Take care.